So Andrea Plan B noticed a little trick I pulled on you, that we definitely make capacitors out of metals, because the whole idea of a capacitor is it's a circuit element where you can apply a bias and get a potential. So it's important that we have a conductor, a metal, where the charge can flow onto the capacitor. But when we did the calculation, we treated it like a charged plane. So if I have a little charged plane here, looks something like that, and it has some charge density sigma, then we know that the field just outside of it, E equals uh, sigma over two epsilon naught, and on this side, it points that way, E equals sigma over two epsilon naught. And we know that if we have a negative charge plane over here, negative sigma, a bunch of negative charges sitting on a plane, and you're just seeing the edge of the plane, it's gonna create an electric field pointing in like that. With the same magnitude, E equals sigma over two epsilon naught, E equals sigma over two epsilon naught. We use that and we brought them together really close so that they really do act like infinite planes. Then the E field on the inside is just the sum of these two because they're in the same direction. Right? So that's why the E field for the capacitor is sigma over epsilon naught. And I didn't point it out, but actually the E field outside the capacitor cancels because to the left of this plane, you have a field due to the positive charges that way. You have a field due to the negative charges that way. Right, so each one of these makes opposing charge out here, E equals zero, and E equals zero on that side also. So when you think about it in terms of two charged planes, it's basically superposition. You're just adding the fields, okay? Now let's think about it for metals, or for conductors. I'm just gonna go ahead and write metals, because that's how we make capacitors. Let's think about a metal charged thing like that, okay? Let's have a positive one with um, positive sigma, and let's have far away a negative one with negative sigma, okay? So the idea, the question is, isn't the field outside that one bigger? Because remember when we talked about the field at the surface of a metal, it only puts its field in one direction behind the surface, it has to be zero. So that's why it made twice as much field, is the field didn't go both ways, the field just went one way. Well, there's a very simple answer to all this, and that is you only have half of the charge on this side and half of the charge on that side. Because we know in a metal, the charge will go all over the surface. So here we had all the sigma charged per unit meter squared in an infinitely thin plane. Here we have it in a metallic object, and half of it goes here, and half of it goes here. Therefore, the field outside this large piece of metal is also E equals sigma over two epsilon naught. So it's the same thing. Same thing happens over here. Half the charge density goes on both sides. Therefore, the E field here, E equals sigma over two epsilon naught. Therefore, when you put them close together, where they really do act like infinite planes, like this, minus, minus, minus. The E and the gap, when you put them together, would be sigma over epsilon naught. So in some sense, that solves the problem. And if you think in a limit, what if we make this metal thing really, really thin? Well, basically it's just shoving the charges together and they have nowhere else to go and they look like this. So that might satisfy you but you could still have trouble, okay? One thing we can't do is we cannot break Gauss's law. If we break Gauss's law, we've done something wrong. Let's check Gauss's law here. So here, we're gonna make a little Gaussian uh, surface like this. It goes into the capacitor, half of it's outside of the capacitor, and it contains one of the two surfaces. Let's make sure it's correct. Integral of E dot dA equals sigma, or equals Q over epsilon naught. So the flux, there's no field out here, there's no field on the sides, it's all perpendicular, it's just out the end, it's going to the right. And this has some area A. So it's gonna be, the flux is gonna be sigma A over epsilon naught. There's just one surface that has flux. That has to equal the charge enclosed. Well, what is the charge enclosed? It's the charge density sigma times the area A over epsilon naught. Hey, it worked. 
Check. Check plus. Galson's law. What if we now come over here? Hmm. Let's do Gauss's law over here, and let's put one of the Gaussian surfaces inside the metal. Let's have the other one out here. Hmm. What's going to happen there? Bad things are going to happen. Let's do Gauss's law. Integral of E dot dA equals Q over epsilon naught. So E field in the metal is always zero. So there's nothing on this side. There's nothing around the outside because it's in the wrong direction. So it's really this this way. So it's E sigma over epsilon naught times A. Sigma A over epsilon naught. Okay. The charge enclosed is what? Uh, sigma over 2A over epsilon naught. Uh-oh. Something's wrong here. Gauss's law isn't true. Gauss's law isn't true means something's wrong. Something has gone very wrong. Here's what's gone wrong. When you put two charged planes together, you just apply superposition. Nothing bad can happen. Nothing can change. When you put two charged metals together, things can change. Okay? So when this thing was by itself, the charge distributed uniformly on each side. Everything was fine. But when you bring it close to this, these charges see those negative charges, and they want to get together. Okay? So you bring them close, and all the charge that was back here now runs over here. And all these negative charges run over here. And the back has essentially no charge on it, okay, when you have two plates like that. So the charge configuration changes when you make the capacitor. All right. Let's see if that will make this true. It's still E in the gap is sigma over epsilon naught. Okay. You, you don't recalculate things. It's still true because essentially it's the same situation. Now all the charge has run to the surface. It looks exactly like this. There's no difference. E of the gap is sigma over epsilon naught. And now Gauss's law is going to work. It's still sigma A over epsilon naught for the integral, but now we have our charge all on the surface, so that 2 goes away. So it works again. Woohoo. Okay. Things seem all right. Um, you could also look at it and say, well, this can't be right, because we learned that the field at the surface of a metal has to be uh, sigma over 2 epsilon naught. We learned that the charge has to redistribute, and it has to be uniform. But this is right, because we learned about how to treat the field the surface of a charged metal when there's nothing else around. Right? We didn't think about, what if something else is nearby? We didn't do it for this thing coming together. When something else comes near the charged metal, then the charge distribution can change. But in the end, you can tell this is right, because they're the same situation. It's all the charge being forced into a thin plane on the surface. So this is the cool thing about physics. No matter how many times you come up with some word problem or thought problem or emotional problem with how the problem works, the physics is never wrong. Right? It always can be worked out, even no matter what crazy little problem you come up with. So find the hardest ones you can, Andrea Plan B, and keep asking them, and we'll see if we can find one we can't deal with. <laughs>